wife. You can forget about it because if you don't care about the small stuff and you're willing to let go of all other relationships when something small happens, then what are you going to do when you have a real relationship with a wife and the big things happen? You're just going to like flake it off. You're not going to care because you have a wall built around you that's a very tight wall and you don't let anyone into it. And that's why I say the best relationship that you can have is by yourself. Because you're the only person on the world who won't fail you. And, and I really, really think that, that you, you know, this is what I told him. I said, I don't think that you're married, and it's not because of your beard. And you could blame it on your beard. And it's not because you're a, a convert, and you could blame it on that. And it's not because you were involved in porn, and it's easy to blame it on that. And it's not because you have this blog and you put everybody down on it and you criticize everybody and put all the lush and horror up there and they and they could blame you for that you could say it's any one of those four things or a combo of the four that keeps you from getting married but I think the biggest enemy and the biggest deterrent for any woman to marry you is because how you are in relationships and I have to believe that's how you are when you date women that that you you, you don't you don't uh, care about what the other person is and your narcissistic love pushes them out of the way, you build up a wall, and there's no way that they can make it through it. And think of it as like, you know, a, 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 a bar. You set the bar so high that what of your expectations from people that they have to be on time, have perfect grammar, right? Uh, what else? They have to have perfect grammar, they have to be on time every time. Responsible. They have to be responsible, they have to get a job, you know, they have to vote Republican. You know, and what is, what's, what's with me? Uh, and they can't, you know, they have to get your sarcasm. Don't drive me nuts. If I say I got HIV, it's obviously a joke. You know, and that's how you are. And the bar is set so high, no person can possibly get over it other than himself. That's it. The Levy bar is so high. And then he tells us, you know, and I slugged this up earlier. He said months ago that his expectations for people are not very high. Are you kidding me? He, his expectations on people, like, you know, are not very high. I say, and I said, I, you know, I cut people off all the time. Like I cut from satire out of my life, right? You know, fuck me over, right? I cut him off. He's gone, right? And if you were going to be like that, I told you, I have no problem. I'll cut your ass right out of my life. You know, I'll delete your ass off Facebook. I won't talk to you again. I don't care. I don't think about it, right? I cut people out all the time, right? I have high standards. You claim, oh, I don't ever, you know, delete anybody from my life. And I said, it's because there's nobody in your life. There's nobody in your life. You don't let them in to begin with. You don't let anybody, you don't care about anybody other than yourself, and that's it. Okay, yeah. so I've got, I've got a bedtime story. It's not the end of the show, but I just thought I'd is like this gonna involve change sex? gears. Well, <laughs> the name of this story is Rosebud. Okay. And so I was at this Do and Lose singles event at the Century Club in Century City, and I saw this woman, she was like a 6.5. So I kind of get a sense for... Does like, everything have to be based on looks with you? Not everything. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. So I thought, I get a sense that this, you know, there's someone in my league. So I go up to her and I, first thing I say to her is like, where do you go to temple? And uh, she, she finds this intriguing because she's just getting back into Judaism and she's taking this beginner's course in Judaism. And so we start talking and I get her info and I call her up the next day and we arrange, she arranges to take me to the beach. Okay. So she picks me up, she takes me to the beach and we put like suntan lotion on each other. She's got these long fingernails and she just like grazes them on my back and it feels so good. So, so good. And, and we start talking and uh, I'm not really sure where I'm going with my life and I just found this... I don't know where you're going with this story. Trust me. <laughs> so, I just found this reality show that wanted like couples, and so I asked her if she wanted to be my couple, my girlfriend on this reality show. Okay. And she said no, and then she said she didn't even want to be my girlfriend in real life, that she didn't think that, that I was marriage material. She was about 32, so her marriage clock was ticking. She was a professional. Okay. Like I was 20, about 27 at the time, and I had no job, and I was just kind of struggling to find my way in the world. So... I thought, wow, you know, I'd gotten cocky, I'd gotten careless. I said, hey, you want to be on the you know, reality TV show? And I find it never helps with chicks to get cocky and careless about the relationship or marriage or like any, you know, relationship stuff. Don't get cocky and careless. Anyway, she invites me over for dinner. So I go over to a place, she cooks me a nice vegetarian meal, and we're like sitting on the couch. And I say, hey, you want me to row your back? 
Okay. And uh, so I start rubbing her back, and after she starts sighing as I'm rubbing her back. And so she says, why don't we go into my bedroom? So we go into my bedroom, and, and like we, we do the wild thing. And, and I'm kind of homeless at the time. I'm living out of my car. Okay. And so she's going away for the weekend, so I drive her to the airport, she lets me stay at her place for the weekend, and then she comes back, and okay. I can, we get together again, and she says, is there anything you want to do? And there's something I had always wanted to do, and that was to turn over the table. Well, here we go. And <laughs> I know go. I'd wanted to do that with a previous girlfriend, but she was frightened, and so she told her mother about it, and the mother said, don't be a whim. But... Uh, we were never able to do it. So this girl, I say, you know, I want to turn over the table to use a Talmudic phrase. And she says, fine, like I asked her to pass the piece. It's like, wow, you know, what kind of girl is this? And I guess the reason was I'd seen this in movies. Like I'd seen some movies where I'd seen... You mean porn movies? Well... That's... You're not going to find, you're not going to find, you know, a, 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 a regular R movie with an anal sex scene. I'm sorry. I, you know, maybe I'm wrong here, but I... You know, you're watching like Terminator, or you're watching like uh, you know, uh, Sopranos. You're not going to see a lot of butt sex, okay? Like, tell me if I'm wrong here, folks. But I, I don't think I've ever seen it on regular TV. You know, you only saw it on point. Go so ahead. I wasn't, I wasn't orthodox at this time. So I didn't have a beard, and I didn't wear a black hat, and I didn't wear my seat seat out, and I didn't wear a yarmulke all the time. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't orthodox. I was more reform. Okay. So I really found I enjoyed this. The Lucanator. Really, the Lucanator. I, You're the Lucanator. I really enjoyed this. This was my rosebud. Like, this was like my sleigh that meant so much to me as a kid. This was like, this really affected me. And uh, after a few weeks of doing this, uh, I said to her, hey, there's this girl. I, I said, oh, I've got to go to New York for a few weeks. Like, and she said, well, where will you stay? And I said, I'll stay with a friend. And she said, well, is this a female friend? And I said, yes. And uh, she said, are you going to be having sex with this female friend? And I said, I don't know, I kind of lied. And uh, she said, you're going to be having sex with her. And she started crying. And this was a girl I met in a singles ad. She placed a singles ad for, for a friend. I'll call her Stephanie. And uh, she'd inherited a lot of money from her family. She had this really nice place on like 78th and Broadway on the Upper West Side. So I f she paid for my ticket to fly to New York for three weeks. I flew to New York for for three weeks, stayed with Stephanie. She was really bossy. She said, Does this like, story have an ending? Yeah, yeah, trust me. Okay. And so she starts like telling me what to do, and so I kind of tune her out, but we have great sex every night, and she gives me spending money, okay. and she takes me around New York, she shows me Lincoln Square Synagogue, she shows me the Jewish Center, she shows me uh, Crown Heights, Borough Park, she shows me uh, Stern College. We go to the library at Stern College. Okay. So I really get a sense of New York. I borrowed five hundred dollars from her to get this two hours with the major acting manager. I was pursuing acting at the time. Okay. And uh, I realized the relationship with her wasn't working out, so I placed a singles ad while I was there in New York and said I was bi coastal. And <laughs> somehow Stephanie found it and like called the number. This is like nineteen ninety four. You no, know, and it's like, oh boy, I was kind of busted then. So our last night together in New York, we go to a video store to rent a movie, and she rents Sleepless in Seattle, and I okay. rent I Like to Watch. And uh, so I, I play I Like to Watch like on the TV, and then I kind of like, I watch I Like to Watch while I'm with Stephanie. All right. And I kind of imagine that I was with the girls in the movie I Like to Watch. And uh, then, I, then I flew back to Los Angeles and uh, managed to get back together with Jane. We'll call her, call her Jane. And uh, we get back together for a couple of weeks, and she takes me to her parents' house. And I just taken this acting workshop, and so I had this videotape from this acting workshop that I hadn't gotten to see. So I go to her parents' house, and I said, "Hey, do you have a TV and a VCR? Do you mind if I watch this?" <laughs> so when I should have been making a good impression on her parents, I was there watching myself in the acting workshop. And so after a couple of weeks, like Jane says to me, "Look, my parents don't think much of you." My friends don't think much of you. My therapist doesn't think much of you. You need to move out. So the problem was, at the time, I was living out of my 1979 Datsun station wagon, and it was in badly need of repair. So I said, uh, could I borrow $500? So what does that got to do with the whole thing of, of what you came here this afternoon with? Trust me. I don't... 
catch it at all. It's just you you just hijacked the show for